Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I am really excited to have my next guest here with us today, Dorothy Richardson. We actually were connected through LinkedIn and we were able to get on a Zoom call and just have a great conversation about the importance of having some positive outlook on what lies ahead for 2021. You know, we all have had our struggles with this uh, global pandemic and wearing masks, you know, just a number of things that have just kind of catapulted us into this very unfamiliar territory. So when we were able to get on a Zoom call and have a lot of connections with one another, we were really excited to come before the audience today and share some of these different um, insights. So before we get into that, I wanted to give Dorothy the opportunity to introduce herself before we get into the interview. Well, thank you. Thank you, Lachelle. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, uh, like Lachelle said, my name is Dorothy Richardson, and I have been in career development for a little over 10 years. Uh, basically, I came prior to that from the financial industry, and then there the 2008 crash came and I decided I wanted to reinvest, reinvent myself in the workforce industry. And I actually found my passion in that area. So basically I am a facilitator. I facilitate a lot of different workshops that deals with uh, helping individuals uh, find uh, their next job and transition into other careers. So uh, I am happy to say that uh, I love what I do and I'm always out there helping individuals. I love that. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, this is just such a great topic to go over this time because so many people out there are in this space of, you know, they need to reinvent themselves. You know, it's been 20 plus years they've been doing a certain position. You know, they've gotten comfortable. This is pretty much related to their identity and then boom everything has been turned upside down so in your case you re reinvented yourself what tips would you give somebody who is kind of in that space of reinventing themselves you know how would you recommend them get started on that journey well, basically, when it comes to transitioning into whether it's a new job or reinventing themselves into a career that either they want to go into or they're thinking about, it is a process. Mm -hmm. So uh, I like to tell everyone it's something where they do need to sit down. They do need to plan. Um, and also my organization, they also, um, you know, recommend that as far as sitting down, thinking about what is it that they'd like to do? Try to direct it into things that they're interested in. Like I always tell everyone, if you're going to do a job or you're going to work into something, you want to make sure that you feel fulfilled mm. and you want to go into something that you like to do and you feel like once you're done with you know, your, your job for the day, you come home, okay, I've got certain things done, I have accomplished things. Um, it's a nice feeling. So I do tell everyone some of the tips that are great to do is that you want to sit down, you want to plan. And if you feel like you need to go a little bit further, you may want to think about doing some assessments. Okay, uh, assessments in an, in a pretty much in in the direction where number one, a lot of people think that character is something that when it comes to doing assessment to career is not important. It is important. So I do tell people you may want to think about taking a character assessment, think about taking a skills assessment. Uh, also think about taking an assessment where it shows you where your strengths are. Uh, so basically those type of assessments, I really recommend people to, you know, pretty much sit down and do and see what the outcome is. You never know. It might show you some results where uh, because of what you like, it it brings you into an area where you never thought of maybe you want to go into mm. and explore some of those avenues in those areas. And I, I'm, I'm, I would truly say that that actually happened for me. I really thought I was actually doing financial investments and I loved it. 
Uh, I actually did. And, and when I reinvented myself, I actually took an assessment and it showed me some areas where I had my strengths. I love helping people. Uh, I pretty much, you know, looked at my story, looked at my background and pretty much it helped me to see, you know, some of the areas that my strengths would be pretty much helpful to um, not only others, but also myself. So I do tell people assessments are pretty good to do, to help. That's them good. Clarify. That's a good, yeah. Now, and so you mentioned that your company um, is available for things like that. Now, you know, walk us through that because a lot of people, you know, when you have this change in your life, you're going through things, you think, you know, there's nobody out there for this. You know what I mean? This is yes. more of a internal problem, you know, same yeah. thing sometimes when we're dealing with our mindset, you know, my uh, history was depression and to know yeah. that you can get a coach or a therapist, you know, you're just kind of thinking, <laughs> I got to figure this out. So what, what kind of people should they be looking for organizations that help with that reinvention? Well, for us, for, you know, pretty much um, I'm with Career Source, Career Source Broward, and we actually help a lot of individuals pretty much go through that process. So, for example, there are certain assessments uh, that are paid or that are free, um, certain things like, for example, we have something called the Florida Skills Assessment. That's a really good assessment people, you know, take. It doesn't take very long to do, and when it gives the result, you know, we find that a lot of the customers and our clients, they pretty much agree with what the results are. And once they see those results, it gives them more clarity in starting to look in the direction of employment or where is it that they should work or what is it that they should do. We also offer something else called Career Scope. And Career Scope is really excellent because it has a dynamic of different things not only what the person's interests are, but also what skills do they have and what kind of jobs maybe they are not interested in. It also asks us some of those questions. So doing some assessments, for example, like the two that I've mentioned, they really do help a lot of, you know, customers get clarity. And from that point, you know, I really strongly do um, recommend coaches. Uh, for example, myself, I am a coach. I am a career coach. That's pretty much, you know, what I do uh, and sit down and have that conversation with uh, a coach and, you know, discover certain things. So I really recommend, you know, to go in that avenue when it comes to sitting down planning about your career, about what kind of job you want to do, or even transitioning into possibly something new. I love that. And I love the aspect of getting a coach because I think a lot of people, you know, that's a big transition. We're just using this example of somebody who right. has been in this career for 20 plus years or right. they thought this was going to be retirement for them. And then boom, you know, you have a pandemic and everything is, you know, the, the rug is pulled out from underneath them. So I love that aspect and thinking about you know, what is the best way for somebody to know what kind of coach they should have and, you know, what kind of qualities to look for? Exactly. Uh, like I said, you know, you can start off with a coach. I find also uh, when you do seek coaching, you have to know what kind of coach. A lot of times, for example, I will coach someone in their career, but it turns out to be after having that conversation, you know, it could lead them into also working with another coach, for example, a life coach, mm -hmm. life coach. That's really the fundamental of really knowing how is it that you, you know, you pretty much go into what you want to do, because there might be certain things that can be barriers in your life. Mm -hmm. So with some of those barriers, you know, sometimes people have to approach those barriers. Sometimes you have to, you know, find decisions. How are you going to work those, you know, those situations, those problems. And a lot of times that helps to lead to have a clear mind mm -hmm. in um, moving in pretty much like the transition in your, you know, work desires or so forth. 
So I always tell everyone, I really do recommend coaches. Coaches are great. Um, you can work with one coach or even multiple coaches mm -hmm. because you may not have one situation that you feel you have to deal with. You might discover that you might have something else mm -hmm. that comes about in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to have that blockade where if you're trying to get somewhere and do something, you still have something else to go ahead and, and deal with mm -hmm. before you successfully able to you know reach that target. So I really do believe in coaches. And um, like I said, they're great to work with. I love that. And then, you know, so as we kind of approach 2021 and thinking right. about the business landscape, you know, it's kind of crazy. But yeah. what advice would you give people in terms of, you know, making themselves marketable? You know, what are some things that we might be thinking to do uh, or things that we can actually implement that we might not be, you know, really on the radar of some low hanging fruit, so to speak, of things right. which should be preparing us for this new um, landscape for business? Well, the first thing I do tell everyone with all of these changes that's going on, like you mentioned, Lachelle, you know, the world is going through a pandemic. And we've had to jump into changing a lot of our ways. We have a new norm we have to deal with. There are many people out there who uh, are not technically savvy. And they may do a job very well that doesn't entail technology. Uh, so that's something that, you know, they may have to think of, especially if they're in transition. So... I like to tell everyone with this new norm that we are approaching, you wanna sit down and evaluate your skills. Uh, you know, go back to the old foundation way of making two columns. See is, what is it that you can do confidently, you know uh, that, you know, I have no problem. I can target this, I can tackle this, uh, I could do that job. And then also look on the other end where if, you see there are certain skills that you need. I strongly do tell everyone that, you know, try to find ways to see if you can attain those skills. Uh, because right now we are going to enter into an environment where it is not only education that matters. And many people felt before prior, uh, education really meant something where uh, you can always get the job you want with having the degree. That's all great. That's fine. But now I feel that the environment is, if you have the skill, they're going to look at you first. Everything else can come along. And uh, I, like I said, I'm not down in education. Education is great. Having a yeah. bachelor's and master's, that's excellent. That is actually... Uh, a, a plus bonus for you, especially when it comes to your salary. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, someone else can do a job much better sometimes than a person who does have education. So I tell everyone, you know, you want to look at your skills, what you have, and what is it that you need to attain. Not only that, one of the biggest things right now, especially with the pandemic, uh, social skills. We're having to address um, different ways of having great social, so we call them soft skills. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how you communicate with people, how you communicate with your team, um, how you, you know, present yourself or what you are trying to persuade, you know, at your job. Uh, these are really important. And a company is going to look at someone who has very strong soft skills compared to somebody who doesn't have any soft skills. So soft skills are really important, especially now because there are people sitting in front of their computers every day now since we've gotten into this pandemic and they're having to teach themselves, learning how to jump onto their meetings, staying in meetings for two and a half hours or the whole day. So it can be you know, a little bothersome, but at the same time, those social skills are really important in having diverse social skills. Mm -hmm. I love that. Skills. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and you mentioned communication. And I guess I would ask for some tips with that because, 
you know, not only are you communicating via computer, but then you've got your family and everybody's at home. So then you got exactly. that form of communication and, you know, family that's away and maintaining those same uh, relationships, but in a different format. You know, you can't see each other face to face in every situation, but communication, communication, we hear that a lot. What are some tips that we can implement during this time to make sure that we are conscious of our communication, some hacks or some things that maybe we aren't even thinking about that really can have an impact in how we communicate to one another? Well, some of the tips I can tell you that are really important is number one, identify your different levels of communication with everyone from your family to your children to your workplace, to even who you network with. And the reason I tell you that is because we all know we communicate with all of those different groups differently. A good example, let's say a mother has now have had to uh, adjust to working now from home because of her situation with uh, you know, the children being at home. There's three big things that we are facing now with this pandemic and this change. Work, child care, and definitely online learning or online working. So how you communicate in especially those areas, they're not going to be the same. So I always tell everyone, you know, you want to sit down, you want to evaluate or reevaluate what are the areas that you are good at or what are the areas you need to improve in how you communicate with your children? Let's say, you know, you have a child who needs to do schooling from home. Um, <clears throat> what is a progressive positive way for you to communicate with them? So that way, once that's taken care of, then let's say you have to sit in front of your computer and you have to work and you have to communicate with people on your team. You have to be able to separate those and you have to be able to know how to communicate successfully in those different areas. So, you know, like I said, all those different communications and <clears throat> they all deal with soft skills. You wanna make sure that you have that in line, you know how to do that, you know how to practice to do it. Soft skills is an area that if you're not strong at it, you definitely can learn it. So once you can really get yourself confident in those different areas of how you communicate with everyone in your life, then it makes things much more easier. And of course, take time for yourself. You know, um, take time for yourself, evaluate how uh, your day has gone, how you've progressed, how were you able to successfully communicate with all of those different sectors that you may have to deal with in your life on a daily basis. And, you know, that's something that I strongly do feel people do have to, you know, probably take a look at and reevaluate or learn, you know, a lot of those different things. So true, because even, you know, I, what comes <clears throat> to my mind is, you know, you have a business or whatever it is, you're reinventing yourself. You know, we have a lot of coaches, for example, but you have to differentiate yourself in some manner. So communication is key with really mm -hmm. honing in on your message, what that message says about you and what you can offer and deliver to that potential client or whoever. So that is uh, great points that you have given us. The next thing that I would ask is a follow-up strategy. You know, what would be ideal, you know, as someone who is reaching out to different organizations or their people and their network about reinventing themselves or the opportunity to seek people that might uh, point them in the direction of the field that they want to enter into. What are some good things that we can do when it comes to following up with those conversations or, you know, networking events, different things like that? Because right now, a lot of people have been going to networking events. They've been on summits. They've been doing everything right. to get a different position. So 
you know, they say the fortune is in the follow-up. So what are some follow-up things that we could be doing? Well, number one, like you mentioned, network is so important, especially for the job search. I tell everyone, uh, 10% of individuals will attain a job from job boards. The rest is all network. So imagine if it's just 10%, someone going on, uh, let's say for example, Indeed, ZipRecruiter, or even Career Builders, or even the, you know, the state website. For example, for us, we have our state website, Employ Florida. You're sitting down, you're applying for jobs. But the truth is in, when you get yourself out there and you network and you follow up, you keep yourself present. That's where you will get results. Not just contacting just once or, you know, let's say for example, once in a while, um, you really wanna stay present. And I even tell my customers the same thing. Once you say present and you follow up, find out if the position was filled, find out when can you follow up again, follow up, follow up. And most likely they will see that you are interested in something. So they will follow up with you. On the other case where it comes to, let's say networking, trying to reach out to people that you want to connect yourself with. It's always very important for you to stay connected, send messages, even if you see the day, you know, that day it's their birthday. Well, I just want to send you a wonderful happy birthday for that, for that day. And, you know, have a great day. You will be amazed how someone's so appreciative just to see that message coming from someone in their network. So I tell everyone, you know, when it comes to networking, that is still the strongest thing. Who you know, who knows who, and who is it that you can connect with that can help you connect to someone else. Mm -hmm. So networking is a huge thing. I love that. And I love the whole thing about the birthdays and stuff because, yes. you know, I always tell my kids because they're like, oh, mommy, I want this. I want that for my birthday. And it's like, look, you know, it's so funny how we all have that enthusiasm. When you get older, it's like, it's another day. You know what I mean? You get to the point where you don't even expect anything except from your kids, right? Because they're still at that enthusiasm stage. And everybody else, you just don't expect anything. So then when you get a message or, you know, a voice call, you know, saying, hey, just want to say happy birthday. It's like, what? How do they know? You know, it really <laughs> exactly. just, I mean, it's like, hey, they, you know, they got celebrity status really quick because, <laughs> exactly. you know, we just overlook those things. So I, I'm glad you brought that up. That it's a really big yeah. game changer. And even yeah. on the professional level. I still tell, you know, some of my customers that, you know, if you see someone has posted, you know, when their birthday comes up, you know, for that morning when you're checking your social media, which is something really big today, uh, you know, send them a little message saying, oh, I see it's your birthday today. I just want to tell you have a great day. Or if you see someone's gotten a promotion, congratulations on your promotion or on your new job in your transition you'd be amazed of how you stay present in that person's eyes and they will remember you the next time, you know, you connect with each other. So uh, I feel it goes for both ends, both socially and definitely professionally. Love that. That's a good uh, piece of advice. So the last thing I would say is, you know, profiles. Right. We've got all, we're on every platform. It's like, hey, you were trying to get out there, get that exposure for us to be seen for whatever position or to build our network, what kind of things should we be mindful of with our profiles in, edder, in order to move ourselves forward and, you know, seen in a great light? Well, the one thing I tell everyone is uh, when it comes to creating or building your professional profile, you want to make sure that, let's say, for example, LinkedIn, which is the platform for professional use, uh, you want to make sure, number one, you fill it out. And I tell people, as complete, you would do an application. Because if a company or a decision maker is looking at your profile, you want to make sure that you're able to answer all of their questions. 
So anything that you have been able to achieve or accomplished, or uh, let's even say key words that gears towards that transition of job you want, you wanna make sure you put that in there. Uh, another thing is I do tell everyone when it comes to having your uh, social media for professional and personal, you, I still tell everyone you wanna keep those lives separate. So, so someone can have a personal, let's say, for example, Facebook, mm -hmm. and you have family and friends who can go on there, uh, which is fine. You definitely want to check your settings because there is still a group that you don't probably want to see certain things on your um, Facebook account for personal, especially if they're considering you for a job. Uh, and when it comes to your professional, you want to make sure you have a separate email and you know, you talk about all your professional accolades and your achievements and your jobs. So those two lives, I always tell everyone, always keep them separate. But we're finding a trend now, especially with how everything has changed, everything, everyone is on social media, everyone is having multiple social media accounts. Um, when it comes to you know your professional use, uh, you know you want to see what social media is going to work for you. And you want to see who is your, you know, group that you want to reach out to and target. So it's important to know which, you know, social media you want to use. But like I said, you want to keep those two lives separate. If you find one's going to work for you, great. If you feel it's not going to, then you may want to think about it. Mm -hmm. That was so. good. Good stuff because, you know, we can kind of get so um, inundated with trying to figure out this platform, that platform, and things can get confused. Yeah, so exactly. it's so good to really have a strategy, you know, on how we can move forward with these things. So this has just been some great, great insight, great tips. You know, um, I could go on with a thousand more questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And, you know, that's the thing. And even like you're mentioning, putting your accolades on there, you know, we get recommendations or uh, we get new products or maybe we modify something we're doing and we don't think to update that on our profile. So something as simple as that can be a game changer or, you know, you have a book that comes out or exactly. uh, any other position. Now, one thing I would say, I thought that was my last question, but <laughs> how, what's the best way to kind of present ourselves on some of these? Uh, digital platforms, you know, when you're online. So with the Zoom, you know, in order to um, be um, memorable, maybe. Well, first of all, how to present yourself, I always tell people to be very authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when it comes to introducing yourself, you definitely want to talk about uh, certain things that, um, you know, you have skills in and also you're interested in. Mm -hmm. So presenting yourself on some of these social media platforms, um, it's all about being authentic and telling your, you know, your target group who's looking at your profile, you know, what are the areas that you're more um, interested in? And what are the skills you're more interested in? What a direction that you want to go into? And that's really important because a lot of times, you know, people will have information on their profile, but it doesn't tell them what direction they're looking to go into. So you really have to hone into telling, uh, you know, your base or who your target is, or who you'd like to look at your profile your decision in going a certain direction. You have to have a decision. And that tells them a lot of, you know, pretty much what is it that you're looking for? Uh, what kind of job you're great in or you're interested in or, or what are you transitioning into, especially now with so many people transitioning? Um, you definitely want to go ahead and do that when it comes to, um, you know, putting your profile together and so forth. Great tips, great tips. I'm telling you, I'm just over here um, wishing I could write everything down because I'm a writer. But uh, I'm, that's why I like the video, though. I can always go back and rewind it because 
you know, this is the thing, conversation, you don't think about it. You come back to it later on. And it's like, you know, uh, when it comes to life, it's usually the simple things that, you know, make an impact. We go and we make things so complicated that you can't remember that step or you miss that. And it's like, you know, go back to the simple things. So, you know, go back to a conversation, knowing what it is that you want. I think in half of that is, like you said, that clarity goes a long way because you're going to ask questions with a specific goal in mind when you have that clarity. Otherwise, you've got information overload. You know, Mm -hmm. you've got you, Dorothy, as a career coach telling us this, we go and get on Google and Google is saying something else. And we, yeah, we miss the whole situation because we're not coming from a place of clarity and trying to keep it simple. So I appreciate the things that you mentioned because, you know, things that are simple are easy for us to take action on. It's this other formulas and complicated things that get us to a place where we just don't even get started. (laughs) And I'm speaking from experience, okay? (laughs) <laughs> right, right. And, th- and that happens to all of us. Sometimes we put too much thought into it. Yes. And we don't move. Exactly. So that's why it's so important that you are authentic. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you really just start writing things down. And then, you know, you start filling, you know, filter it out, filter things out. So that way, you know, this is really what I want them to know about me. So and then true. you put that on your platform. So like I said, putting too much thought into something can, you know, deter you from getting things done. You just want to go ahead and do that. So that way you can present yourself, you know, on social media. So true. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And what's the best way for the audience to get a hold of you? Well, definitely. If you look on uh, LinkedIn, uh, you can just search for Dorothy Richardson. Okay, Um, I do have some designations, you might see NCOPE and some other ones. That's a great way for you to go ahead and reach out to me. Send me a nice note. And I always look at whoever sends me information. I always respond to everyone. So I like to also talk and have conversations, even if it is, uh, you know, using certain different platforms. That's our new age. So this is now our new way of having to communicate more often with people. Awesome. And then what final words would you share with everyone today? I just love to tell everyone uh, with everything that's going on and the changes, uh, you do want to go ahead and just sit down, relax, think and reflect on where is it that you want to go? What direction? And if you do need assistance or help, remember, there are so many different coaches out there. Uh, there are also uh, career centers out there where you can probably go in and have a conversation or talk with someone and give them an idea of your direction to see how is it that they can help you reach your goal or where you'd like to go. So pretty much, you know, that's what I'd like to just tell everyone. You really want to sit down and think of where is it that I want to go and how is it that I get there and come up with a plan and a strategy. Great words, very simple, easy to implement. And I love how she told everyone, if you need help, you can reach out to a coach and um, see someone who resonates with you. You know, part of it is definitely asking the right questions. You know, find out if this person is right for you. Don't be afraid to ask those questions because if we don't, move forward, we're just going to be stuck where we are. And if that's not the place you want to be, you got to think about, you know, putting that ego down to a certain extent and finding somebody that can help you. So again, Dorothy, we want to thank you so much for your insight and uh, your words of wisdom. And I encourage everyone listen to reach out to Dorothy to get um, just a conversation, just start with a conversation that can really give you an aha, some light bulb moments that can help you move forward in whatever it is that you're aspiring to do. And I'd like to thank you very much, Lachelle, for having me on to have this uh, conversation. Oh, you are so welcome. And I'm glad that our paths cross. And hey, based on your input, it's possible we can have you back as we 
go into 2021 and think about some ways that we can still continue to move forward because, you know, I know we're not quite over this hump yet when it comes to this pandemic. So it's always good to have that added positivity and someone that could steer the ship, so to speak, as we go through some of these unchartered territories. So thanks again for coming. And we want to thank you guys for watching and reach out to Dorothy if you have any questions about anything with your career and you want some added insight. So we will see you guys the next time. Thanks again for watching.